Hello trainers, Ganeto here, and today we have so much Ultra League action with my Sad Dragon Knight coming up pretty strong. At the back, we have Tapu Fini and the Sadslas from Alola. No Sadu at all because we need that extra bulk that we can get for this team. And now let's focus on the battles. We have Scrafty for the first one, and of course, we can outspeed here to that Dragon Claw. As you saw here, I took that fall play, but it doesn't matter. Sad Dragon Knight can still pull off the win on the Serious scenario, and at the worst case here, they could farm us down if they blocked once. But overall, as you can see, we can still handle that threat. So here comes now Skarmory, and we have the perfect alignment here. So it all depends on what they might have at the back. If they chip away a lot of HP out of our Pokemon, we might be in trouble because at the back they end up having an anti fairy Pokemon. Hopefully, here we can still stay in, but Skarmory can somehow be troublesome even against our uh, Tapu Fini if we're not careful. So all of our shields, all of our efforts have to be given on our uh, Sunslas over here. So here comes now Drill Run and another one before they reach to the next Scald. I know that we can get there much faster than they can to their move. So we can absolutely have the upper hand. But my opponent makes the uh, correct and smart play by baiting here with the Essence Spray. It was only logical for me to spend a shield at this point. And right after they're just gonna finish me off with that uh, Sky Attack after they count my moves correctly. Now Tapu Fini can go in. Can we outspeed now to the Brave Bird? Yes, we can. Here comes the Surf. Down goes Karmori and we're gonna start off the video in a positive vibe. Let's head now into the next battle with a Tapu Fini up in front. Are you kidding me? This is horrible. But how I want to play this is to charge up to a point that they might throw the Moonblast and try to catch it on my Tapu Fini. I know that my Tapu Fini is not gonna be used uh, as a great safe switch overall, but it is the only safe switch that I could get for this team with with extra coverage for other threats and of course I'm just gonna use it most of the times as a punching bug. So here comes now my Dragonite and since we have baited out of their Virision we can absolutely have the upper hand now with those double Dragon Claws. As you can see at this point we can have kinda the upper hand because as it seems they have a Stone Edge on their Virision that's why they blocked and by blocking here from my end I can easily farm down. Here comes now a not very effective move there is no way at all this is a Stone on it, so I am just gonna take it. I'm expecting Tapu Fini to return and in doing so we're just gonna switch out to our uh, Sandslas and at this point you can see that the Surf is gonna do some mediocre damage but still we can somehow uh, make up for it with the Drill Run. They managed to block which makes me thinking what they might have at the back. There has to be something pretty weak to my Pokemon especially something like a Giratina or a Trevenant I do not know but I can only guess at this point. Here comes Drill Run for almost the finish off. A couple of Sabdoclaw later, we can do that. And right now, we're just gonna switch out to our Dragonite, having the superpower for massive damage on the Metal Trash Can. And one more right after to secure the victory against my opponent, who was pretty weak to those fighting moves. Let's see now what the next one has to offer because it is daytime now in my battles and we're having Pidgeot up in front. So, this is not looking that great, especially if we throw after they go for that feeder dance but because i know my typing i my typing my timing i'm just gonna go ahead and throw at the cmp here comes now Tapu Fini to clear the debuff out and of course they're gonna outspeed here to the next feeder dance. I'm just gonna take it even if it's gonna be a Brave Bird but to be fair I was not expecting that at all from this point. Here comes now Giratina and I can easily get here to the Moonblast that means that uh, even after the debuff we cannot go ahead and double shot this Pokemon but it is gonna be extremely close and we can definitely take advantage of that. Here comes another Moonblast from my part and of course they're gonna be left with a little bit of HP after all those debuffs. This Shadow Sneak will definitely finish us off, but Dragonite can absolutely farm down before they reach to the Dragon Claw. I knew they had some extra energy, but as you can see here, they have a Cobalion at the back. I'm pretty comfortable by going for the bait here. This is their only play, to be fair, they want to go ahead and block the Super Power up first, and since we have the Seed Advantage, that's why I was thinking that they would most probably block whatever I throw here, and now that I have so much energy, I can easily get to the superpower for the clean nuke against the steel type and as soon as they see my sunslash they are definitely gonna get out of here with their Pidgeot. 
Into the next battle now, we are having a Shadow Ampharos up in front. This Pokemon is pretty troublesome because we cannot switch out effectively. Tapu Fini is pretty much afraid of it, but uh, Shadow Dragonite can somehow make up for that matchup if we sacrifice two shields in the process. I always try to go for the early Dragon Claw because they are always gonna block their Shadow as well, and we're Shadow, so Shadow damage to another Shadow Pokemon is definitely gonna be tremendous. And as you can see here now, we are down to shields. All I want to do at this point is to preserve this matchup as much as I can. Another Dragon Claw taking advantage of all of those turns that Incinerate takes to be unfolded. And we can definitely now uh, go into the battle with Tapu Fini. They decide to spend some energy here with the fly on my Pokemon, then switch out to their Swambert, which makes a lot of sense now. They can easily almost one shot us down for, with an earthquake from this uh, range. We're gonna see in a while if that is gonna be correct. And as soon as I see the switch, I have to respond accordingly. So here comes my uh, Sunslash. So at this point, all we have to do is to go ahead, make them throw their energy. As soon as we get to the Surf, we have to throw it and pray that they cannot survive the following serves because they need one more incinerate i believe and we can just be able to farm down completely the remaining hp that town of flame is having before they reach to a single move so here comes now another shadow ampharos and guess what trainers this one will try to catch my move for some reason they did not catch it normally i could go ahead and throw my dragon claw here so that was a smart play from my opponent but for some reason i decided to keep it and see how this is gonna go uh, and yeah absolutely worth it so here comes now moonblast and we're just gonna go all in here with our moves uh they're gonna throw now their energy it's their time now with the surf this time which means that they might actually have a little bit of extra uh energy stored up as you can see we're having kind of a weird lead we have kind of a bad lead and let's see how well we can do here because ampharos definitely has some energy to spare as well i will over farm just uh, as a little bit more than usual about two of those or three of the shadow claws and i'm just gonna switch out to my dragonite i know that they have to respect the damage from my dragon claw and now they return to the battle with their giratina all we have to do at this point is to go ahead shield the following dragon claws of my opponent and answer back at them with the same claw here comes the double move though which can definitely put the nail in the coffin of that giratina see what i did there because it is a claw we put a nail this nail yeah this is kind of bad as a joke but still they have trailblaze that can boost up their attack on my shield brutal swing now and that ending was so brutal that we're gonna swing around the victory with our final ice since we can survive that uh, hyped up uh, move that they just threw so into the next battle now and we're facing a Jellison up in front. This Pokemon is kind of troublesome for my team as well because it can easily pull off the win against my Dragonite, has a solid battle against uh, Tapu Fidi and even against my Sunslash it can kind of be a draw if we are not careful at all. So here comes now the Surf, I knew, the, I knew this was gonna be a Surf because it uh, did only three of, uh, uh, three of those Hexes, excuse me for that, and yeah we absolutely uh, could uh, predict the correct move here now they switch out to their uh nine tails and because i have a lot of hp remaining i'm just gonna preserve all that hp for the end game and i want to have the upper hand here with my tapu fini on the switch to bait out something like a fighter that my sandslas might be afraid of as it seems, my opponent will just stay into the battle. They have at the back a Charizard, which is pretty good news for me. And now Sunslash will throw that move. And right after, we need to respect the damage from the following Dragon Claw because it can be absolutely lethal from this uh, range for my Pokemon. Uh, so Dragonite now is just gonna reach to the Dragon Claw to finish off Charizard and the super power for massive damage on that fairy type Pokemon. Right after, we can easily return to the battle with Sunslash, and because of that second switch that we did there, we managed to get that victory. Polyrath now for the final one, let's see how this is gonna fall because now with Icy Wind this Pokemon is pretty troublesome. Just remember they need 7 for the first one, 6 for the second and we can always outspeed first to the, with a Dragon Claw and secondly with that superpower if they do not pass through a free counter. 
Uh, so uh, throwing on the correct alignment, counting those turns is going to be uh, the optimal thing that you can do for this matchup. And as you can see here, this is a very close one because they had almost a nice win rate to go if they were not even there. So here comes now the Dreogla on that Cresselia. And I'm pretty fine with this, even if they want to completely farm down or just go with the extra farm and then throw. Because now we have the best alignment ever with Sanslas over Cresselia, which is a Pokemon that can absolutely uh, wall down that uh, Moonlight Pokemon out of existence. So here comes now my Ice Punch for some cheap damage. And I know that in combination with my Cytoclaws, we can definitely have the upper hand for sure. However, those future sides are, are starting to threat a little bit my HP. But hopefully before they reach to their next move, we're just gonna get there now to the Ice Punch. Down goes Cresselia. At the back, they have Registeel. And because of that seal that we have, we stand absolutely on the correct side of the events. Here comes out the drill run. Let's get the trainers. Absolutely immense amount of damage. Not so much. Not even 50% because this is Ultra League after all. And we're hitting with our spiky Pokemon a Metal Trascan. But they know that they stand no chance at all here. So they will back out. That is gonna be all for today trainers. Thank you for watching and for staying till the end. Just be sure to leave a huge like before you go. Subscribe to the channel if you are new to my content. And with that said, I have two videos for you to check out. Feel free to check them out and I will see you all into the next one.